Welcome back. So, we do a little bit more work on our level transitions today. I want I wanted this to be a really smooth experience. So right now, if you go up from the town into the field, pauses, see some jitter, and then we're in the field. And back again. What we talked about, the way to get around that jitter is like when you go up, before it begins loading the map, you fade out, load a new map, then fade back in. So that's the effect we're going to work on today. And I was looking over our collection of displays. I think we're going to put our fade in, fade out effect between the UI and the sprites. So we're going to have to take over the text display, at least for a little bit. So let's start it. So we're going to do a couple things. First of all, move that camera out of the way. It's not entirely related, but Here. we're going when you initialize the, the camera, I'm going to feed an object to track. So, new camera, hit the tracking entity. Our update function, which is going to do most of this. I'm going to split out that force update stuff because that will be as a separate function. Call it reset. Oh, in place of the point parameter from here, we're going to use our self.tracking property. And then for the reset, that's going to contain all that force update stuff. So every function should do one thing. We don't have to recalculate these every time. They're always the same. In fact, they don't even change on each instance, so we're just going to assign them to the class directly. Let's make sure this works. We'll build the camera if we need it. Move to a new map. Camera reset. Otherwise, if the camera should move, do a camera update. Actually, we're not tracking the. We're actually tracking the player's play. Now. Let's do it like this.
Like, let's see, but in case we end up resetting the sprite on the entity for some reason. And makes some properties make that easier to read. Start tracking why. Guess all that gobbledygook. Let's make sure that still works. So far, so good. Our music has gone suspiciously. Oh, there we go. Must have had it muted. Okay, cool. Now, for that transition, let's get the finish game the camera out of our way. Need that initialization for now. Camera. We need to make sure to import it. And then we need to deal with the map running. So we're going to need two functions fade in and fade out. Let's go ahead and stub those. So, what we're going to do. When we start loading to level, we fade out, do all the stuff, and then at the end of it all, we fade in. Not that. So, but I won't do anything right now. What we need to do for each of these, save the old text display. So we need to save it up here because it's going to text display is just display three. Nope, because we're about to uh, we're about to thrash that. The second thing about how I want to do this, we're just going to store this here. Was the old text equals the text display. When you fade back in, the final thing you're going to do is say that globals at text equals old text. Install it. We're grabbing reference to the old text display, and we're going to use a solid color display to handle our transition. How do I want to do this? You know, one thing we could do is recycle the solid color display sitting in the far background. Not, we're not actually able to see it anymore. I have no idea what that will do. But let's find out. That'll be exciting. We're going to 
right when you fade out, we're just going to install the solid color display where the text display was, and then set it to a translucent red. And then wait a couple seconds. N time equals time plus three seconds. Well, time is less than N. Wow, well, so that'll just delay for three seconds. That's actually how you need to do it there. All right, let's see what that does. I'm not very sure what to expect. Oh, this is so exciting. Here it goes. And we'll pause it for three seconds. The screen does not fade. Pops over to the next screen and looks like we've crashed. Like, we've actually crashed the whole mini microsystem. Which is kind of cool, really. Always need to find a new way to crash this. Every, every system has bugs. <laughs> I'm going to launch a new mini micro. I think the problem is how we are popping around these displays. I'm grabbing an existing display that's already installed and installing it over into the text display. And I think I just made it really mad. Do this. Um, let's think of it like a solid color display. Install a new solid color display into the text layer. Set the color. Reinstall the text display at the end. Let's see if that helps. Also, I'm going to do us another favor. Drag our player back up to the top. Makes testing a little bit easier. And here we go. Okay. What's interesting is that this whole thing is still froze. We're gonna figure out why. It's like it's like that loop never breaks. The whole system just locks up. Let's see, fade out. Wait in. We're gonna do this. We're not we're gonna take out the pause. Set this to red. Stall. Let's take another look at the solid from the display. Right. Yeah, display a color. I wonder if we have to clear it at the end. I don't think we do. So you said the display mode. Let's do this a little different. What modes do we have? Display mode. Display mode's on solid color. And we don't have to store the old text. We're just going to 
set it back to a text display. All right, so we grab the text display, change it to a solid color display, modify the color, and then let's take away. Let's, uh, we're not going to fade it back in. We're just going to leave it like that and then take our debug text so it doesn't immediately crash everything. Let's hand print to a solid color display. And it goes red, which actually is exactly what I want. Can we go partially red? Oh, it tinted just a little tiny bit. Here, we'll make this a little more obvious. Mm -hmm. There we go. You see, it uh, it does work. We just need to work on our. We were going to do that. We have a color alert. Let's start with this set to color here. Start time and an end time. Color lerp from color clear to color black by end time divided by start time. No, it's like uh, the ratio is end time minus start time divided, divided by the duration. Now, if I did that right, it should fade to black and then stay black. Let's test. Testing. Go. That was a little too fast. It did go to black, though. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, end time minus start time divided by duration. Giving it three seconds. Hmm. Those are static values. It would be time minus start time divided by duration. That way it actually changes throughout the course of the loop. We're going to do the opposite here. Going from color black to clear over that same duration for fading in. Three seconds is probably too long, but let's take a look at it. Let me set the camera so I just don't want to see that. Bring it out. Fade in. Oh, that was nice. That is exactly the effect I'm wanting. But the duration is too long.
Let's make a big controller. The one second duration. <laughs> make controller to fade out, fade in. This one we're just going to treat like a static mess. We don't need to make a new instance. And that's wrong. We have the text display when we're all done. No, we'll do that. And I'm not sure we need this line either. I think that'll be handled by our while loop. Out, fade controller, fade out, fade in, fade out, fade in. I actually think one second will be too long also because it's going to be one second and fading out, another second fading in. I don't want to have to wait two seconds. So let's see what the half second duration feels like. It feels like it's not doing anything. Okay. Broke something. It faded out and then it was just gone. Oh, duration is now self dot duration. That will help. Nice. That is much nicer. One final thing. Put our playlist update back in place so we can get our music back. And player back down here. Somewhere. Ultimately, we're going to want the player to start down here. Over there in the player's house. Reset. Run. There it is. Um, we need to make sure to reset the camera when we start. Because I still saw that blue jump in the background there. Oh, where did I put that? Main. World level. Oh, it's when we create the camera. We're going to do this. Go to main, load the level. Don't need the scroll too, or that scroll too. We're going to let the camera handle it. Set. So every time the level's loaded, the camera will just reset. Which also means... No, we still need to move the movements and reset here also. Just, just for now. Um, what else my, oh, this needs to be a global. And then pulling out that fade control. Turn 
burn the fade controller with in it to load the fade controller into the program. And let's see what that looks like. really like one final thing making use of our fade controller again putting the zero for duration override that we are just for we'll be putting in place in just a minute We actually don't need these parentheses. Oh, the rogue parentheses. There. Go back to our fade controller. See, <clears throat> more duration. If duration is null, then duration equals self duration. And then we will use that variable to control fading. Let's do that down here also just to be consistent. So it should immediately go to black and then fade in using our built-in duration. And go. Hmm. Not exactly. Why didn't that work? That should have worked. Let's reboot. Wonder if something was just stored in the buffer, display buffer. White. I did not expect. Made out of zero. So if that was set to zero, n times same as time, this would have immediately failed. I think it will work if we do this. Go ahead and give it at least one go at setting the background color. So it's that are equal to Do the same thing down here. If duration is zero, that's gonna fail. No, okay. That that's our main problem. I'm surprised this holding didn't crash. Cannot divide by zero. It does give you a result. Probably hmm. it's interesting. Some some systems will just throw a error when that happens. I think .NET will give you an infinity like that. We are what we're going to do. If duration is zero, then we're just going to set the color to black and duck out. Special case for zero. Same thing, fading back in, duration zero, sit there and duck out. 
Let's see how that goes. Okay, that's nice. We'll test our level transition again. there going back and that's it now, one more or as far as level transitions I'm still going to do that one more thing showing the name of whatever level you're in for a second when you first enter a level and we will pick that up next time thanks for joining me